Coloring does many different things. So I've been working on my coloring book, storybook, Struggles the Bear. And I am gotten to the stage where I am almost finished with my storybook. And I thought I would take a minute um, for those of you who have um, purchased my book, um, if you did and you printed off the pages, you can make your own storybook with your coloring book pages. You can put the coloring pages in ahead of time, or you can wait till after you finish coloring all your pages and then make a book afterwards. Now, you don't need anything fancy to make a book. Um, I'm a scrapbooker, so I had this leftover scrapbook album. So that's where I glued my um, uh, struggles, The Adventures of Struggles the Bear pages in, but you don't have to put yours in that. You can have any old spiral notebook or your agenda from school or anything like that that's old that nobody wants or it belongs to you. You can finish your book and you can glue the pages and that's how you can make any kind of book. You don't necessarily have to have something fancy. You can recycle what you've already had and make something great for you. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. I have glued in my last two pages. Uh, I won't give away the end of Struggles the Bear the Adventure if you haven't read it, but those are the last two pages that I'm going to color. So um, that's what you can do with your book once you're finished coloring it, okay? But if you just came to color, let's take a few minutes to do so. Hmm. I think I'm going to work on this one today. Let me get my Struggles the Bear colors out. All right, so I'm going to play a little music, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about Struggles the Bear. Um, I enjoy writing it. Um, as I've told you before, Struggles the Bear is based on my daughter Sarah, who we used to call Sarah Bear. And then one day her brother called her Struggles because she was struggling because she wanted to be as big as everyone else. And everyone else was getting to do things that she wasn't getting to do. And so that's how Struggles the Bear was born. And if your struggles, I should let you know, things are going to work out for you because Struggles grew up to be a wonderful young lady went to college and is working far from far away from her mummy bear and so my, her mummy bear misses her but bossy bear and moody bear everybody grew up but um she grew up and she's a wonderful girl young woman all right and so it can happen for you it doesn't matter what your struggles are um so i'm trying to think it started off looking like it was going to rain today here in Jamaica. I live in Jamaica, West Indies now. It's very different from where I grew up. I grew up in a few different places. Um, the first place I grew up in was um, Sheffield, England. I was born in England. My parents um, are both Jamaican and they uh, left Jamaica and went to work in England. And that's where they met. They didn't know each other in Jamaica. And they met, fell in love, got married. And then they had me in Sheffield, England. And my mom was a nurse, or training to be a nurse, and then she became a nurse. And my um, dad uh, drove buses. You know, those big double-decker buses that you see in the pictures for London? I'm going to insert a picture so you can see what they look for. And... Um, uh, he became a bus conductor and then a bus driver and that's how they met and that's what they started doing. Oh, I don't like that green. I wanted something darker. Here, I found another one. You know, you can change your mind about a color. You know, just because you start coloring it and you don't like it, then you can go back in your crayon box and um, look for something else. You don't have to have 55 million colors either. You can just have 80. And I'll talk about blending colors at another time. Yeah, I like this green better. 
I do, but I didn't, the other one, I, it's too bright. I didn't, it didn't feel like the, the, um, trees you see in the forest. It, it felt kind of bright green like plants. Anyway, so as I was saying, they met, my parents met in Sheffield, England, and later they decided to move to Canada, which is above the United States. It's north of the United States, and we lived there um, for some time, and um, and then they decided to move to the United States. So they moved to New York, and that's where I went to school, elementary school, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and half of third grade in Canada, in Scarborough, Canada, Ontario, Toronto. I think I still remember my address. 35 Prince Mary Crescent, Scarborough, Ontario, Toronto, Canada. I don't remember the zip code. Anyway, you know, it just goes to show you, just because you have white hair doesn't mean you can't remember things. Anyway, so um, from there we moved to Brooklyn, New York, and it was so different Brooklyn, New York. I was so excited when I went there, and I'll tell you a story about fitting in. When I got to Brooklyn, New York, I had come from a place where when you went to school, you dressed up like you were dressing up for church. Big hair bows, pretty dress, nice shoes. And when I moved to Brooklyn, New York, everybody was wearing Converse sneakers, corduroy pants, and t-shirts. It was so comfortable and nice, and I was so excited. But unfortunately for me, I was not dressed right the first day of school. And, and um, it wasn't the first day for everyone else, but it was first day for me. And everyone looked at me like I was just crazy because I was dressed up like for church. Big white hair bows, bright yellow dress, little cute shoes that were church kind of dress up shoes. So anyway, um, I was feeling kind of funny and and not belonging and then the teacher called me to the front of the room for me to introduce myself and when I opened my mouth everyone just stopped talking and I thought oh no what did I do and what was different was is that I sounded different from everyone everybody was from Brooklyn and they talked a certain way like they were from Brooklyn and I spoke with a little bit of an English accent because, you know, I was born in England, and then I was living in Canada, so my accent was different, and it made me sound different. But, weird as that day was, I met one of my best friends that day. I met one of my best friends that's my friend to this day, and that has been, I met her when I was eight in third grade, and we have been friends for, ooh, 49 years. That's the math. 57 minus 8 is 49. So I've been friends with her for 49 years. And um, can you imagine having a friend that long? I hope you do. I hope you do. Her name is Jackie. And I met some other wonderful friends I'm going to talk to you about another day. Um, how I've met friends and how easy it is to find friends. They're everywhere. You know, you just have to be very careful about who you speak to, but they are everywhere. So anyway, so after that, I grew up and went to middle school and high school. And then my parents, when it was about time for me to finish high school and go to college, my, friend, my parents said to me, hey, we are moving to Houston, Texas. Isn't that different? Everybody speaks very different in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so there was yet another place to move to and to enjoy. And, um, and so that, and, and I lived there for many years. I got married there, had all my children there. And then uh, the man I was married to got a job that sent us to Pennsylvania, where we met some, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we met some wonderful people. And after we met those wonderful people and lived and had a great time and played soccer and had parties and traveled and had uh, great friends, met wonderful friends there, um, our job, the job that my um, 
husband, who, who's not my husband anymore, so I guess my ex-husband, um, we got an offer to come back to Houston. And we did. And that's where we're, all the kids, got, uh, you know, left, got grow, grew up and went back to, um, went off to school. And then I grew up. And then what happened was, while I was busy growing up, my parents were growing old. So they had built their retirement home back in Jamaica because they wanted to live somewhere warm. Wouldn't you want to live somewhere warm with palm trees and the beach and all that stuff? And that's what they wanted to do. So they built this lovely house there and they retired. But um, something not for you to worry about. We don't need to worry about it. But sometimes parents get older and then you get to take care of them a little, keep an eye on them, help them out with things the same way they helped you out and took care of you. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, um, when I was in America, I was a school teacher and then I became a school teacher librarian. So I went to school t two times in order to to do that and I had a wonderful time. Um, I taught lots of fourth graders and then I started teaching an entire school by being the school librarian. But then my mommy got sick and needed care and so I would come and visit on the holidays and then my daddy got sick and then that was an uh-oh moment because once my daddy got sick and my mommy were sick, then they needed somebody here beside the nurses to help take care of them. So, um, I retired. Now, retiring is what something that happens um, when you're finished working and um, for, uh, for anyone, you, you get old enough that you can stop working and, and you start doing things that... Um, other things you might want to do and um, but I ended up being here early I was early because um, it wasn't time for me to retire yet but actually it turned out to be exactly perfect because my parents needed their help so I moved here and I take care of my parents or they take care of me it's kind of you never know <laughs> but they just need me to be here to check on things and so that's why I started this coloring time with stories and storybooks because I miss teaching kids and I wanted to come up with something that would make few people uh, feel good during these uncertain times with all these things that are, we're worried about. And as you can see, I love to color. I've got a lot of crayons. I've got so many coloring books, I can't even tell you, but I used to use them in my library. I used to um, print out um, coloring uh, pages for different ages that came into the library, all the way from kindergarten, all the way up to fifth grade, because it's very soothing and very relaxing. So this is coloring time with Anne Marie, and what I'm gonna try and do is go through my coloring books and give you a little story along with I'm um, giving you time to color. So, if you like this channel, you can subscribe to it and you can click like. And every time I put one of these up, you can get your coloring books out and you can color with me. Or um, you can get a piece of paper and draw your own picture and color with me. I'll try and have music and I'll try and add pictures of the things that I'm talking about into the video. We'll see how it goes, but at least part of it, I'm going to turn on some music so that you can get some quiet time and I won't talk all the way through. Alrighty. I hope you enjoy coloring time.
enjoy and have your brain rest and then play with color. There's nothing wrong with that. So I will see you on the next one. I think, well, I'll keep it a secret. I've got a whole, I can't even count how many coloring books I have. But the next one, I'm going to choose and see if there's a story in there in the book that, um, um, that I'm inspired to tell you. So anytime is coloring time. You can have coloring time just before bed if that helps you relax. Um, you can have coloring time when you come home uh, from school or uh, daycare or work. You can have coloring time anytime you choose, especially if it's a wonderful method for you to relax and feel um, calm. All right. And uh, I'll see you on the next coloring time. Uh, if you like this video and you want more, um, subscribe, hit like, um, and please send me a comment below and uh, show me and uh, tell me about some of the things that you're coloring. I'm always interested in that. And remember, I miss teaching. So um, we'll see you next time.